Sleep from Astrophel and Stella by Sir Philip Sidney From the World's Best Poetry, Volume 6 Fancy and Sentiment, Part 2 Read for LibriVox.org by Thomas Peter Sleep from Astrophel and Stella Come sleep, O oh sleep, the certain knot of peace, the baiting place of wit, the balm of woe, the poor man's wealth, the prisoner's release, the indifferent judge between the high and low, with shield of proof, shield me from out the prees of those fierce darts despair at me doth throw. Oh, make me in those civil wars to cease. I will good tribute pay if thou do so. Take thou of me smooth pillows, sweetest bed, a chamber deaf to noise, and blind to light, a rosy garland, and a weary head. And if these things, as being thine in right, move not thy heavy grace, thou shalt in me livelier than elsewhere stella's image see end of poem this recording is in the public domain sleep from second part of henry the fourth act three scene one by william shakespeare from the world's best poetry volume six fancy and sentiment part two Read for LibriVox.org by Thomas Peter Sleep from Second Part of Henry the Fourth, Act Three, Scene One King Henry How many thousands of my poorest subjects are at this hour asleep? O oh, sleep, O oh, gentle sleep, Nature's soft nurse, how have I frighted thee? that thou no more wilt weigh my eyelids down and steep my senses in forgetfulness why rather sleep liest thou in smoky cribs upon uneasy pallets stretching thee and hushed with buzzing night-flies to thy slumber than in the perfumed chambers of the great under the canopies of costly state and lulled with sounds of sweetest melody oh, thou dull god why liest thou with the vile in loathsome beds and leavest the kingly couch a watch-case or a common larum bell wilt thou upon the high and giddy mast seal up the ship-boy's eyes and rock his brains in cradle of the rude imperious surge and in the visitation of the winds who take the ruffian billows by the top curling their monstrous heads and hanging them with deafening clamours in the slippery clouds that with the hurly death itself awakes canst thou o oh partial sleep give thy repose to the wet sea-boy in an hour so rude and in the calmest and most stillest night with all appliances and means to boot tonight to a king then happy low lie down uneasy lies the head that wears a crown end of poem this recording is in the public domain sleeplessness by william wordsworth from the world's best poetry volume six fancy and sentiment part two Read for LibriVox.org by Lian Yao. Sleeplessness A flock of sheep that leisurely pass by, one after one. The sound of rain and bees murmuring. The fall of rivers, winds and seas. Smooth fields, white sheets of water and pure sky. I've thought of all by turns, and still I lie sleepless. And soon the small birds' melodies must hear, first uttered from my orchard trees and the first cuckoo's melancholy cry. Even thus, last night, and two nights more, I lay, and could not win thee, sleep, by any stealth. 
so do not let me wear to-night away. Without thee, what is all the morning's wealth? Come, blessed barrier between day and day, dear mother of fresh thoughts and joyous health. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Watching in Burma by Evely Chubbuck Judson from The World's Best Poetry, Volume 6, Fancy and Sentiment, Part 2. Read for LibriVox.org by Craig Franklin. Watching in Burma Sleep, love, sleep. The dusty day is done. Lo, from afar the freshening breezes sweep wide over groves of balm down from the towering palm in at the open casement cooling run and round thy lowly bed thy bed of pain bathing thy patient head like grateful showers of rain they come while the white curtains waving to and fro fan the sick air and pityingly the shadows come and go with gentle human care compassionate and dumb the dusty day is done the night begun while prayerful watch i keep sleep love sleep is there no magic in the touch of fingers thou dost love so much fain would they scatter poppies o'er thee now or with its mute caress the tremulous lips some soft nepenthe press upon thy weary lid and aching brow while prayerful watch i keep sleep love sleep on the pagoda spire the bells are swinging their little golden circlet in a flutter with tales the wooing winds have dared to utter till all are ringing as if a choir of golden nested birds in heaven were singing and with a lulling sound the music floats around and drops like balm into the drowsy ear commingling with the hum of the sepoy's distant drum and the lazy beetle ever droning near sounds these of deepest silence born like nights made visible by morn so silent that i sometimes start to hear the throbbing of my heart and watch with shivering sense of pain to see thy pale lids lift again the lizard with his mouse-like eyes peeps from the mortise in surprise at such strange quiet after day's harsh din then boldly ventures out and looks about and with his hollow feet treads his small evening beat darting upon his prey in such a tricky winsome sort of way his delicate marauding seems no sin and still the curtains swing but noiselessly the bells a melancholy murmur ring as tears were in the sky more heavily the shadows fall like the black foldings of a pall where juts the rough beam from the wall the candles flare with fresher gusts of air the beetle's drone turns to a dirge-like solitary moan night deepens and i sit in cheerless doubt alone end of poem this recording is in the public domain The Voyage of Sleep by Arthur Wentworth Eaton From the World's Best Poetry, Volume 6, Fancy and Sentiment, Part 2 Read for LibriVox.org by Sonia The Voyage of Sleep To sleep I give myself away, unclasp the fetters of the mind, Forget the sorrows of the day, the burdens of the heart unbind with empty sail this tired bark drifts out upon the sea of rest while all the shore behind grows dark and silence reigns from east to west at last awakes the hidden breeze that bears me to the land of dreams where music sighs among the trees and murmurs in the winding streams o oh, weary day o oh, weary day that dawns in fear and ends in strife that brings no cooling draught to allay the burning fever thirst of life 
o sacred night when angel hands are pressed upon the throbbing brow and when the soul on shining sands descends with angels from the prow and sees soft skies and meadows sweet and blossoming lanes that wind and wind to bowers where friends long parted meet and sit again with arms entwined and catch the perfumed breeze that blows from pink-plumed orchards sloping fair and every fresh expanding rose that throws sweet kisses to the air o sacred night o silvery shore o blossoming lanes that wind and wind ye are my refuge more and more from ghosts that haunt the waking mind to sleep i give myself away forget the visions of unrest that came through all the clamorous day and drift into the silent west End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Two Oceans by John Sterling From the World's Best Poetry, Volume 6, Fancy and Sentiment, Part 2 Read for LibriVox.org by Sonia The Two Oceans Two seas amid the night In the moonshine roll and sparkle now spread in the silver light now sadden and wail and darkle the one has a billowy motion and from land to land it gleams the other is sleep's wide ocean and its glimmering waves are dreams the one with murmur and roar bears fleets around coast and islet the other without a shore never knew the track of a pilot end of poem this recording is in the public domain ode to sleep by paul hamilton hayne from the world's best poetry volume six fancy and sentiment part two read for librivox dot org by thomas peter ode to sleep Beyond the sunset and the amber sea, To the lone depths of ether, cold and bare, Thy influence, soul of all tranquillity, Hallows the earth and awes the reverent air. Yon laughing rivulet quells its silvery tune. The pines, like priestly watchers tall and grim, Stand mute against the pensive twilight dim breathless to hail the advent of the moon from the white beach the ocean falls away coyly and with a thrill the seabirds dart ghost-like from out the distance and depart with a gray fleetness moaning the dead day the wings of silence over folding space droop with dusk grandeur from the heavenly steep and through the stillness gleams thy starry face serenest angel sleep come woo me here amid these flowery charms breathe on my eyelids press thy odorous lips close to mine own and wreathe me in thine arms and cloud my spirit with thy sweet eclipse no dreams no dreams keep back the motley throng for such are girded round with ghastly might and sing low burdens of despondent song decked in the mockery of a lost delight i ask oblivion's balsam the mute peace toned to still breathings and the gentlest sighs not music woven of rarest harmonies could yield me such elysium of release the tones of earth are weariness not only mid the loud mart and in the walks of trade but where the mountain genius broodeth lonely in the cool pulsing of the sylvan shade then bear me far into thy noiseless land surround me with thy silence deep on deep until serene i stand close by a duskier country 
and more grand mysterious solitude than thine o oh sleep as he whose veins a feverous frenzy burns whose life-blood withers in the fiery drouth feebly and with a languid longing turns to the spring breezes gathering from the south so feebly and with languid longing i turn to thy wished nepenthe and implore the golden dimness the purpureal gloom which haunt thy poppied realm and make the shore of thy dominion balmy with all bloom in the clear gulfs of thy serene profound worn passions sink to quiet sorrows pause suddenly fainting to still breathed rest thou own'st a magical atmosphere which awes the memory seething in the turbulent breast which muffling up the sharpness of all sound of mortal lamentation solely bears the silvery minor toning of our woe all mellow to harmonious underflow soft as the sad farewells of dying years lulling as sunset showers that veil the west and sweet as love's last tears when overwhelling hearts do mutely weep o oh, griefs o oh, wailings your tempestuous madness merged in a regal quietude of sadness wins a strange glory by the streams of sleep then woo me here amid these flowery charms breathe on my eyelids press thy odorous lips close to mine own enfold me in thine arms and cloud my spirit with thy sweet eclipse and while from waning depth to depth i fall down lapsing to the utmost depths of all till wan forgetfulness obscurely stealing creeps like an incantation on the soul and o'er the slow ebb of my conscious life dies the thin flush of the last conscious feeling and like abortive thunder the dull roll of sullen passions ebbs far far away o oh, angel loose the cords which cling to strife sever the gossamer bondage of my breath and let me pass gently as winds in may from the dim realm which owns thy shadowy sway to thy diviner sleep o oh, sacred death end of poem this recording is in the public domain. The Fallen by John Vance Cheney From the World's Best Poetry, Volume 6 Fancy and Sentiment, Part 2 Read for LibriVox.org By Thomas Peter as the narrator And Jason in Canada as The Voices The Fallen In Memoriam may thirtieth one toll the slow bell toll the low bell toll toll make dole for them that wrought so well come come with muffled drum and wailing lorn of dolorous horn the solemn measure slow toll and beat and blow Put out all glories that adorn the sweet, unheeding morn. Come, come, to the muffled drum and the sad horns, Bring flowers for them that took the thorns. Now, now, let the slow bell be struck and the troubled drum. Come, come, the solemn measure slow, toll and beat and blow rebuke this bright unpitying light the solemn measure slow toll and beat and blow for them our beauty and our might gone on the unreturning way for them that took the night that we might have the day two hark voices joyous voices break from the green martyr mounds wake wake the lord our god once more he saith this hand made all it made not death let the blithe bells ring and the may air sing strike the quick drum 
smite sorrow dumb blow the glad horn this glad may morn lift the valiant measures high of the proud earth and sky for them that tent beyond the firmament and on the field of light still gather to the fight blow the glad horn this glad may morn stanch undaunted measures blow gathering courage as they go valiant measures high caroled at earth and sky set bright triumphal stave for them that fought so well that faltered not nor fell for them and all where so yon colors wave unto the four winds given and the proud earth and heaven there believe and battle they whose face is toward the day the ever-living light where is no night where is no death nor shadow of the grave end of poem this recording is in the public domain end of the world's best poetry volume six fancy and sentiment part two